All right, here is an artist rendering of what white blood cells and red blood cells will look like through the microscope. Now, I wanted to give you a little bit of advice about how to view things through the microscope, particularly um, when you're going on and you're gonna need to learn how to identify the individual white blood cells. One thing is that humans are very visually oriented and we really love color. And so whenever people are explaining to you how to learn to identify the different white blood cells, they're always going to talk to you about color. They're going to say, this is sky blue, and that is, that is a bad way to learn them, all right? Whenever you're looking at white blood cells, step number one is to recognize that you kind of have like a little comparison ruler in your microscope all the time. That little comparison ruler are the red blood cells. The red blood cells should always be all the same size. And so you can judge what, what, um, how big a white blood cell is that you're looking at through the microscope by comparing it to uh, one of these red blood cells. And one thing you'll notice is that there are some cells that look like this that are really small compared to a red blood cell and others that like this one that are really big and then quite a number, this one and that one and that one that are kind of in the middle, okay? So number one, know that you can identify the size. Number two is look at the nucleus of the cells, right? If we don't have any color here, if we just look at the nucleus of the cell, let's look at this one. What in the world happened to that nucleus? Okay, I don't know what happened to it, but I know that's a neutrophil, right? That doesn't look like any kind of nucleus that you would want to see. That's a mature neutrophil. When they are young, they just popped out of the bone marrow. That nucleus kind of has this horseshoe look. I know I'm looking at a neutrophil. What about this guy? This guy's got a nucleus that kind of looks like a swimming pool, and it is a very, very large cell and the cell itself is not particularly round. I know that's a monocyte. Doesn't matter what color it is, right? If I go over here and I see this is a very small cell, it's got a nucleus that in this case looks kind of oval, but sometimes can look rather round. And the nucleus occupies almost the entire cell. I mean, we barely have any cytoplasm there. I know that's a lymphocyte, no matter what color it is, right? And then I've got this one. This one, you might look at it and say, hmm, that nucleus. I'm not sure if it's a neutrophil or not. But if you look and you can see that it has got granules that are orange or pink or red, you got yourself an eosinophil. And then if you look at this cell, you can see lots of very blue or purple granules. It's medium in size and you can't even see the nucleus. You've got yourself a basophil there, right? So uh, I know that someday you're going to learn to identify all of these, but remember that this cell right here, that is that cell, right? And when people describe it's got a sky blue cytoplasm, does that look sky blue to you? Kind of looks purple to me. Does that definitely look a different color than that? Oh, a little lighter, right? Don't look at color. Color is the last thing you look at. First, you identify size then the shape of the nucleus, the shape of the cells, and then you look at granules, the last thing you look at is color, right? So formed elements of the blood are going to be the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. You have got about 99 of these red blood cells for every one white blood cell. What does that mean? That means that this beautiful view through a microscope I've got over here on the left, you ain't never going to see anything like that ever again, right? Because generally, you're going to see 99 red blood cells with one lonely white blood cell sitting by itself. Platelets. Platelets just like look like little smudges of nothing. They're kind of purple or blue-purple, and they're much, much smaller than a red blood cell. We're going to talk more about the red blood cells. Red blood cells, that's the color they are, whether the slide has been stained or not, because red blood cells are filled with red pigment. Now, this is important. Red blood cells do not have a nucleus. There is no nucleus. That light area you see inside of a red blood cell, that is the thin area 
in the center of the red blood cell. Red blood cells have no nucleus. Platelets have no nucleus. All right, so which of the formed elements of the bloods have no nucleus? Red blood cells, platelets, which have a nucleus? White blood cells. All right, let's look a little bit more at erythrocytes. Oh, first of all, you need to know that another word for red blood cell is erythrocyte. The cool kids call red blood cells RBCs. They get called RBCs quite a bit. Red blood cells in uh, most mammals are round when you look at them from the top. So when you look at them from the top, they're round. By the way, camels and llamas and creatures related to them, they're oval, not round. Right? And they are thinner in the center than they are at the rim. And here we've got one that's kind of theoretically been cut in cross section. It's thinner in the center. And because it's thinner in the center, there's less hemoglobin there. Because there's less hemoglobin in the center, they look lighter in the center. All right? Now, not only do red blood cells not have a nucleus, they also do not have mitochondria. No mitochondria. Why is that a good thing? I think that's going to be on the next slide, all right? Where are red blood cells made? Once you're born, red blood cells are made in the bone marrow. Remember the red marrow you learned in 150? That is where red blood cells get made. And all of our red blood cells are human red blood cells, but depending on your genetics, your red blood cells will have special molecules on the surface, either glycoproteins or glycolipids. And on the surface, those little extra molecules are identifying this cell as belonging to you. And that is what we describe as being your blood type. Yeah, they're zombies, yeah. Oh, I call red blood cells zombies because they don't have a nucleus. So like they've got no brain, you know. They also have any mitochondria. So in a way, they're kind of not alive. What do mitochondria do? Let's talk about that. So red blood cells as a cell, really their only job is to just be a bag of this protein, hemoglobin. They're just a bag of hemoglobin, this protein, a bag of hemoglobin floating around inside of your, of your bloodstream. And why is that? Well, hemoglobin is a protein that was developed by every large multicellular form of life in order to transport oxygen. Um, why do we need a protein for transporting oxygen? Ha! It is because oxygen is not polar. Since it is not polar, it doesn't dissolve well in water. And what are we mostly made out of? Water. What is our blood made out of? Water. So because our blood is made out of an oxygen and oxygen needs to travel in the blood, it's really a bad idea that it doesn't dissolve in water. So all multicellular forms of life that are very large, they had to invent a special protein whose only job is to transport oxygen. Now, hemoglobin is a wonderful protein. I'm fully in favor of it. However, if we just took this protein hemoglobin, if we just took this protein hemoglobin and just threw a bunch of it into the watery part of your blood, it would destroy your kidneys, which is bad. All right, so this hemoglobin protein, it needs to be contained inside of a little package. And what is that little package? That little package is the red blood cell, the RBC. So RBCs are kind of like not even alive anymore. Uh, and they're just packages of hemoglobin uh, just circulating around through your vascular system uh, carrying oxygen. So they're specialized for carrying oxygen. Now, what is the only organelle in, okay, almost the only organelle inside of your cells that uses oxygen? The only organelle that uses a lot of oxygen are your mitochondria, right? So wouldn't it be smart if life had evolved so that the cells that transport oxygen 
do not use oxygen for their own energy needs. And that's what we have. Red blood cells have no mitochondria, so they don't use oxygen. Since they don't use oxygen, all of the oxygen that they're carrying is going to get from where they picked it up to where they're going to deliver it. And if you're a red blood cell and you're looking around at all the cells in the human body who are so into oxygen, and they're like, why do they even like oxygen, right? So in that way, red blood cells are a little bit, I consider them a little bit, yeah, me and my analogies, right? Um, they are a little bit like um, wolves that are driving a load of hay across country. I think we've got a slide for that. So remember, red blood cells are called erythrocytes or RBCs. They contain hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, it is red. It's what makes your blood red. Um, but that iron at the center of every one of the heme molecules, that is where the oxygen is going to travel. Let's look at uh, hemoglobin as a molecule. Let me go back to here, to the laser pointer. Okay, so here we've got one protein, two proteins, three proteins, four proteins, and they got put together to make a super big, not a super big protein, but a larger protein called hemoglobin, right? So this is the globin part of hemoglobin. What is the heme part? The heme part is this little pigment that is in the center there's one at the center of every uh, protein, every globin, and in the center of the heme, there is this black uh, atom, and that is an iron atom. The iron atom, the iron atom is what is actually going to transport the oxygen. You know, iron, when it does not have oxygen attached, it looks kind of a blue-gray color, and iron, when oxygen does attach, it turns red. Um, the reason that iron looks like rust when, when it has oxidized is because when oxygen attaches to the iron, the iron metal looks red, right? And that is why your blood looks red when there's oxygen in it, and your blood looks like that gray kind of browny color when there's no oxygen on it. All right, we're gonna stop there. And we're going to start up here at the issue of anemia in a moment.